Math 31, welcome to section 6.5. We're going to take a look at a bunch of properties of logarithms, and we're going to simplify logarithms and expand logarithms. All right, and logarithms behave differently than real numbers, and they, they behave differently than exponential functions and radicals and powers, all of that. So there's certain rules that govern logarithms. So I'm going to teach you those rules, those properties, and then we're going to manipulate logarithms. Like I said, we're going to simplify and expand expressions. And I'm also going to teach you about the change of base formula to evaluate logarithms. Now, some of you with your fancy calculators, your fancy new ones, you can directly plug this into your calculator, something like log base 2 of 7. For my calculator at home, I can't. I don't have that option. The only option I have is I can do common log of a number and I can do the natural log of a number. So on the older calculators, those are your only two options. And so there is a workaround. There's a way we can change the bases of this expression using common logs or natural logs so I could calculate this number. So if you don't have the new fancy calculators, no problem. I'll show you how to get this number using nothing but common logs or we can get this number using nothing but natural logs. We will change the bases to um, calculator bases or calculator functions that we have. All right, so we'll save that to the end. Let's talk about our properties of logarithms. There are five of them. Two of them we've talked about briefly before and three we haven't. And you may have seen these previously in some math class, but I wanna make sure we review them or at least talk about them, especially if they're new to you. So assume that m, n, and b are all greater than zero, that the base of your logarithms isn't one, and that n is a real number. And then once we have that, and I know that already seems like a lot, then the following properties hold. All right, so the first one we're gonna run into is something called the pro product property, all right? I want you to take a look that on the left side of this equation, note that the argument is a product. It's m times n. So that's why we're calling this the product property. So when you take the logarithm of a product, what you can do is you can add the individual logarithms. So take note that there is one logarithm on the left side of this equation and there are two separate logarithms on the right side. The argument here is a little bit more complicated. The arguments on the right side are very simple, right? It's just m and n. So the log of a product is the sum of the logarithms. And that's what I'm saying right here. The logarithm of a product of two numbers is equal to the sum of the logarithms of the numbers. And this stems from an exponential equation or an exponential, yeah, equation or property, I should say. And this says when you have something like b to the x times b to the y, when you have a product of powers, what do you do with the exponents? You add them, all right? And keep in mind logarithms are exponents. So that's what we're saying here. When you have two powers that you multiply, you're gonna add their exponents. We also have something called the quotient property. And again, take note that on the left side here, you have one logarithm and a semi-complicated argument. And on the right side, you have two logarithms and very simple arguments, just m and n. But in this case, when you have a quotient as your argument, the quotient property says you'll do log base b of m minus log base b of n. So the logarithm of a quotient of two numbers is equal to the difference between the logarithms of the numbers. And let me scooch this up a bit just so we can start to see maybe more of those properties or almost all of them. This stems from, if you remember back in your exponential days, if you had two powers that were divided by each other and their bases were the same, what did you do with their exponents? You subtracted them. And again, logarithms are exponents. So that's what we're saying. If we have the logarithm of a quotient, what we really wanna do is subtract those logarithms because when you are taking the ratio or the quotient of two powers and their bases are the same, you subtract the exponents. All right, we have a third property called the power property. And if we look at the argument here, you can see this argument is a power, right? M is the base, N is the exponent. So what the property, excuse me, what the power property says is if your argument is a power, you can take that exponent and bring it down in front as multiplication. So this becomes N times log base B of M. Or in words, I could say the logarithm of a number raised to a power is equal to the exponent 
multiplied by the logarithm of the number. And that comes from the exponential property where if you have a power raised to a power, what do you do with those exponents? You multiply them. So for all three of these logarithmic properties, there is an equivalent exponential property or power property that you picked up at some point in your math careers. All right, for these last two, we've talked about these in here before, in this class. Whenever your argument is one, your exponent is zero, right? So log base b of one is zero, and that's because b to the zero is equal to one. Anything raised to the zero power gives you one. So if you're talking about a logarithm of one, that exponent's gonna be zero. When you have log base b of b, we've talked about that as well. When the base of your logarithm is the same as the base of your power, the only thing that survives is the exponent. And this is the simplest version of that problem. If I had given you something like log base b of b to the seventh, that would be equal to seven. All right, so when the log, excuse me, when the base of your logarithm and the base of your power are the same, the only thing that survives is that exponent. All right, so in a moment, we're gonna take a look at example one, and we're going to expand some logarithms using these properties. And when I say expand, that means we're basically gonna go from the left side of the equation to the right side. Because I expand in that I went from one to two logarithms. So I, I expanded my number of logarithms. Here I went from one logarithm to two logarithms. Here you went one to one, but you're still expanding it through multiplication. And there will be times when we, when we move the other way, when we simplify, when we go from the expanded form and we collapse it. And it really just depends on the directions. All right, so let's scooch down here. All right. And I can't get all of the logarithmic properties in the same view as the example, so I'll, I'll scooch back and forth. All right, so my directions here say expand. So I want to just take a look at what I have in each of my arguments. I want to take note here that my argument here is a product. My argument in example B is a quotient. And my argument in example C, or 1C, Right now, I'm just gonna say it's a radical. If you can see where we're going with this, great. And if you can't, that's great too. We're gonna to talk about it in just a bit. All right, so taking a look at this, I have a product, so maybe your spidey senses are going off and you're thinking, well, I know what property of logarithms I'm gonna use. Now, since I can't get it all in view, just keep these numbers in mind. We want log base seven of eight times six. So if I go back up here and I look at the product property, and again, I want to look at the product property because my argument was a product. Instead of log base b of m times n, we had log base seven of eight times six. So this is gonna be log base seven of eight plus log base seven of six. All right, so give me a moment. Let's scooch this back down and get all of this in view. So here we go. I am going to have, this is equal to log base seven of eight plus log base seven of six. Okay? And so looking at this, there's no way to simplify this logarithm because eight is not a power of seven and six is not a power of seven. Right? If this had been, if the argument here had been seven or maybe this had been 49, I could have done something with it but I, I can't go any further here because eight's not a power of seven and six isn't a power of seven. So just take note, right, that this really, if you wanted to rewrite this, this is log base seven of 48. So I want you to see how this split up because there are plenty of times I see students, if I give them this expression, they'll tell me this is log base seven of 14. Right? That is not how logarithms work. You do not add the arguments, all right? Logarithms have very specific properties and we need to learn those properties in this, in this section and use them in future sections. All right, so for here, we expanded. All right, one logarithm to two logarithms. There will also be times when I ask you to simplify when I start you here and ask you to go backwards to here. All right, here I have the log of a quotient. So I'm gonna scroll down just a bit till I can get the quotient rule in view. There it is, the quotient property. All right, so for part B, we had log base six of 12 fifths. So this is going to be, my B is gonna be six, my M is gonna be 12, and N is gonna be five. So I will have log base six of 12 minus log base six of five. 
And let me go write that out. All right, so we have here log base 6 of 12 minus log base 6 of 5. And I can't simplify these anymore. 5 is not a power of 6, and 12 is not a power of 6. And you might be thinking, well, 6 times 2 gets me 12. Yes, 6 times 2 gets you 12, but logarithms aren't dealing with multiplication, they're dealing with exponents. So 6 raised to the power of 2 is not 12, because 6 squared is 36. So since 12 is not a power of 6, I can't simplify this any further, which is great. That means the problem's done. All right, so over here, I want to talk about this argument. I want to talk about the cube root of 9. This is equal to 9 to a certain power. And we've talked before, even in this course, about how radicals have equivalent rational exponential expressions, meaning there's some kind of fraction, a over b, that might look like a 6 for right now. There's some fraction here that I have as an exponent, but i got to remember what it is. All right, so let me show you the rule, and then I'll show you what helped me when I was trying to learn it. So the rule is if you have the nth root of x to the m, it is equal to x to the m over n. All right, so if you have a radical expression, it has an equivalent rational exponential expression. And how this works is whatever the index of your radical is, it, because the, it becomes the denominator in your rational exponent. Whatever the power on this, or I should say whatever the exponent on this power is, it becomes the numerator. And so what I had here was I had basically 9 to the first, and I had that cube root. So the fraction here, again, whatever the, the exponent is here, it becomes my numerator. Whatever the radical, oh my goodness, whatever the index is here, it becomes your denominator. All right. And if you have trouble remembering which order goes where, this is what I did when I was trying to learn it. I always remembered that the square root of x was x to the 1 half. This square root of x came up so often that it was just easier for me to remember, hey, anytime I saw square root of x, it was x to the 1 half. And then from there, I could deduce every other rational exponent because I knew there was an unsaid 2 here, and I knew there was an unsaid 1 here. So it always reminded me that whatever the exponent was here, it must get mapped to the numerator, and whatever the index was, it got mapped to the denominator. So I was able to just extrapolate. Like whenever I saw a square root of x and I knew that was 1 and 2, that would be 1 and 2. So I knew if I saw the cube root of 9, that that 1 would go to the numerator and the 3 would go to the denominator. All right, so let's rewrite this. We have log base 2 of 9 to the 1 third. So if you look at your argument right now, it is a power. And if I scroll down just a bit, there's that power property. And the power property says that we can take whatever this exponent is, the exponent of your power, and bring it down in front of the logarithm as multiplication. So this will become 1 third times log base 2 of 9. All right. And again, 9 is not a power of 2, so there's nothing I can do to simplify that expression, which is great. That means I'm done with the problem. So there we go. There's our first look at expanding some logarithms using those logarithmic properties. We use the product property here, the quotient property, and we wound up using the power property here because I could rewrite this radical as a power of 9. So we're going to flip to the next page and we're going to practice using all of these properties, usually multiple properties in a single problem. Here I just did one property per problem. We're going to start comboing them. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Bye.